Careful use of our resources is a central challenge of our time, both on the producer side and on the consumer side. Successful implementation of the energy transition depends on technical factors, such as a fundamental transformation of energy supply systems towards sustainable energy generation and more efficient energy use. Part 1. Harmonic Waves in Electric Grids Electrical energy is commonly generated in power plants, then transported via transmission lines and delivered to a large number of electricity consumers. Theoretically, the voltage on this network is a 50 Hz sine wave voltage. In reality, however, the sine wave is distorted. That's because some devices have a non-linear load, such as diodes or switching regulators. These devices have repercussions on the voltage curve on the network. They generate harmonic waves. Harmonics are waveforms with a frequency that is a multiple of the fundamental frequency. That is, they have a frequency of 150 Hz, in that case the resulting curve looks like this. Or additionally of 250 Hz, 350 Hz or 450 Hz. Even though the harmonics also contain electrical energy, they are still not wanted in the grid because most devices on the grid are designed for 50 Hz. They cannot use the power from the harmonic waves, but only use the power from the fundamental wave. For some devices, the harmonics are even problematic. The energy from the harmonic waves is converted into heat by some devices, such as electric motors. Other devices with capacitive components such as fluorescent lamps can be overloaded by harmonic waves. This is because the harmonics with high frequency lead to a large current at the capacitors. Also, electrical signals can be disturbed by the harmonics. In other words, the proper functioning of telephone and internet connections can be hindered by the harmonics. Countermeasures against harmonics It is possible to suppress the harmonics by low-pass filters. A low-pass filter is a circuit which can be connected in front of the respective device and which straightens the current flow through the device. That is, the low-pass filters allow the 50 Hz fundamental wave to pass, but they block the harmonic wave. So at the output of the low-pass filter you only get the fundamental wave. Let's take a look again at the devices mentioned previously. If a low-pass filter is placed in front of an electric motor, the motor is protected from overheating. If a low-pass filter is connected in front of the fluorescent lamp, the capacitive control unit of the lamp gets protected against overcurrent. And by placing a low-pass filter in front of long wires, those wires will emit less noise signals so that phones and internet and electronics can operate undisturbed. The addition of low-pass filters therefore can be useful, but conventional low-pass filters do not use the energy of the harmonics, but they convert it into heat. Instead of the electric motor, it is now the low-pass filter that becomes hot. This may be acceptable for low-power devices, but in practice the harmonic waves account for between 30 and 60% of the current courses in industrial areas. In high-power devices it is therefore better to use the harmonic waves as active electrical power. That's exactly what the e-saver does. It converts the unusable energy from the harmonics into usable energy. One can think of the e-saver as a kind of waste-to-energy power plant. A waste-to-energy power plant uses the chemical energy contained in the waste and turns it into electrical energy. The e-saver uses the energy contained in the harmonic waves and turns it into energy of the fundamental wave. In both cases, an energy form that needs to be removed is converted into another usable form of energy. So how does the e-saver gain the usable energy from the harmonic waves? It stores the energy from the harmonics at some times and releases it at other times. In general, there are two ways to store electrical energy over a short time range. One possibility is to use a capacitor. For this, let's have a look at a circuit simulation in the circuit navigation system. We see here that the voltage drops across the capacitor and current flows into the capacitor. In other words, energy is put into the capacitor during this process. This causes the capacitor to build up an electric field. That's how we can store energy in the electric field. And then release it again. When the energy is released again, the field dissolves. 
We can see that quite well at this point of time. Even though the voltage source no longer supplies any voltage at this moment, our current is still flowing. This is because the voltage needed for this now comes from the capacitor. The other option is not to use a capacitor, but a coil. Storing the energy here is based on a different physical principle than with the capacitor, but the application is similar. We can also put energy into a coil. In doing so, the coil builds up a magnetic field. The energy can be used later. The field releases its energy again and the current decreases again. This is a circuit diagram of the E-Saver. The central element of the E-Saver is a component similar to a transformer. Just like a transformer, it has a coil around an iron core. In addition, the E-Saver has three center taps. These are used to set the switching level. The more stable the power supply at the installation site, the higher the switching level can be selected and the higher the energy savings. That E-Saver transformer looks like this. It works as follows. The coils absorb the additional energy during the times when the harmonics provide additional energy. They build up a magnetic field in the iron core. They store the additional energy in the magnetic field, as shown here for the first of the three wires. The magnetic field induces a current at the output. At other times when the additional energy from the harmonics is needed, the magnetic field is reduced again. That is how the E-Saver balances out the deviations. When the voltage is too high, the magnetic field is built up. And when it is too low, the magnetic field fills up the gap. This results in a straightened wave at the output of the E-Saver, which fits better to the ideal fundamental oscillation. In other words, the E-Saver behaves for electrical current about as a flywheel does for rotational speed. Fast pulses are blocked, only the actual, slower signal is kept. So far we have covered theory, but what does all this look like in practice? Let's look at measured values from a field test. We have measured the harmonics at a customer's plant. This was done in front of the E-Saver and after the E-Saver. The measured values show the effective value of the currents of the 5th and of the 7th harmonic wave. Here we see two particularly interesting time ranges. First, the harmonics were increased in the factory, that is, machines were operated. As mentioned earlier, especially switching regulators on motors generate a lot of harmonic waves. But what do we see on the other side from the E-Saver? We see the harmonics from the factory do not arrive at the grid. While we have an effective value of harmonics of about 20 amperes on the factory side, we have only about 7 amperes of harmonics on the grid side. This means that the harmonics generated here in the switching regulators do not burden the grid. And because you keep the grid free of harmonics with the E-Saver, the installation is also subsidized by the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. Until the second time range, the harmonics of the factory side decreased again. The switching regulators and other sources of interference were switched off again. Instead, the harmonics on the grid side were increased. This happens in the field test due to external influences on the grid. The harmonics on the grid side were measured about at 18 amperes, but on the factory side the harmonics remained at about 6 amperes. This means that your factory equipment is protected from the harmonics coming from the grid. Let's have a closer look at the fundamental wave, here shown in blue. In the first time range, when the harmonics come from the factory side, we have a larger current on the factory side than on the grid side. On the grid side about 450 amperes effectively flow, and on the factory side about 550 amperes flow, so about 100 amperes more. A small fraction of the extra current is achieved by lowering the voltage, but the main part comes from recuperating the energy from the harmonics. And this recuperation is exactly what saves you the electric power, carbon dioxide and money. 
In the second time range, when the harmonics come from the grid side, the currents on both sides are similarly large. In this measurement, 550 amperes on the grid side and 520 amperes on the factory side. In this case, therefore, less energy is saved than in the first time range. What do we learn from this measurement? We first saw that the e-saver protects the transmission network from the harmonics. But the protection against harmonics works in both directions. Your installations are protected from the harmonics from the grid with the e-saver. That's what we saw second. Next we looked at the usable energy. We have seen that the harmonics that arise in the plant itself are converted back into useful energy by the e-saver. And lastly we have seen that the harmonics from the grid are converted less into useful energy than the harmonics from the plant. From these last two results it follows that the e-saver works efficiently when your system generates a lot of harmonics. So if you use devices with switching regulators, such as regulated electric motors, the e-saver can save you electric power, carbon dioxide and money. Contact us. We would gladly carry out a measurement at your site and discuss the possible applications for your system with you.